everybody welcome to soul seeker podcast this is your host robin sharma and today we are going to talk about how life after covid-19 would look like and their possible scenarios so today i'm going to talk about how we as a human being we could see the world unfolding to us in different levels in personal level in the level of our society in the level of our country in the level of how different industries and as a whole world how would we kind of evolve and because there is a lot of noise that goes around every day and every day we are looking at the number you know we never looked at we never looked closely to few numbers that the way we have looked the numbers of corona virus infection and death i think a, even a cricket lover never saw a whole world coming down and holding themselves in a room and just checking the number every day and i know it could be overwhelming i know it could be so frustrating i know it could be so tiring to stay in one place and not able to do few things that you really want to do and i can understand that and these are the part of changes that we might have to kind of adapt for a very long time so today i'm going to talk about what are the possible good scenarios and what are the possible bad scenarios that we might have to come to really accept in coming future so in the personal level you know we would not be able to have like we will not be able to hug each other for a long time like that human connection that h- human act we would do to show love and compassion to others maybe it would have it would have to be restrained for a very very long time handshakes you know gathering possible places like a birthday party like a wedding like a concert like a movie theater all of this gathering would not be possible for a very long time and that is a reality we need to accept and maybe we could find a very creative solution to it that is a reality we should accept too so you know in a personal way i can imagine there's so much of noise that is there outside that you really really want to listen to you and maybe this virus which kind of isolate you a lot would give you that chance to really reflect to your own inner voice would give that chance to really see inside what truly really matters to you and maybe you'll work for it and i think it is a positive impact see there is there is a lot that a personal as a person as an individual might have to go through but the the severe impact is very less but the impact as an economy the impact as an as a individual business holder or a, as a employee or as somebody who is working i think your work is going to be the most affected by it so how the how do you think the world is going to look like after this it is going to be just okay next day no it is not you know when you go and buy a new car you would be your temperature would be taken you would need to sanitize your hand you might even need to take your shoes off before you get get to that particular pr- property because those are the sanitation sanitization or you know protocol that we might have to follow for a very long time until the vaccine is created and that might be our new reality that might be our new way of seeing things and we might better accept it as soon as possible than you know kind of not believe that okay we have to live in this this world and and there is a possible scenario of an, another outbreak too so we might have to come back and stay at home for another month that is also a possible bad scenario but it is very much possible 
But to talk about, you know, as a whole, how do we see the business? There are so many businesses that are going to get affected by this pandemic. I think any business that requires a huge amount of gathering of people at a particular place, like a restaurant, like a music concert, like a movie hall, anything would be the kind of the first industry that would be most impacted by this. Their sales, their revenue for next one, two years would be severely impacted and all they would maybe are planning to, or if you are in that industry, all you have to plan is to sustain this is not going to last, but it is going to last for a long time. So you got to sustain and survive. So I think there would be businesses that need to go into survival mode where they, where they just survive this period so that after this period they can boom. And I think if, if once everything is okay, all those industries would boom big time. So I would generally feel that this two years might give all those other industry a big push that we would have never seen over this like over this period of time but this two years or this one year we might have to bear some losses and i guess that is the price you pay of becoming an entrepreneur and believing in your ideas that you do not give up and I, I genuinely believe that anybody who is there losing hope as an employee, losing, losing hope as an entrepreneur, I would like to say don't do that. Because I think the world is better off regardless of what you have faced. And we already have faced it. The whole world has faced it. We have never in this modern economy come to and halt like this. Nobody could imagine this scenario. And now we have imagined this scenario. And we are not in the worst, but in a very controlled way of moving forward in a progress to do something great. So I think next time a pandemic comes around, we know what to do. We already have our trial period. And I generally hope that, you know, we would learn a lot of lessons out of this for, uh, for us as an individual, for us as a society, for us as a country, and for us as a whole world. So moving, moving forward on, you know, just to give you a little idea of how, which are the businesses that would be most gaining the most attraction. I think game industry is going to be one of the biggest industry that evolves during this pandemic. And I think we need, we need certainly more people working for this industry, creating innovative games, not only the war games that we play these days. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we could come up with great educational games that we teach our kids without even letting them feel that they are actually studying something. We could create a lot of games that involves a lot of adults, old people, so that they get engaged while they are in isolation. And I think game for people who love different industries. So I think the gaming industry kind of need to evolve their ideology of and also tar their target audience by targeting different people and different industry with a level of, you know, engagement that they could bring. Like people have different interests. So a game industry could be a doorway to bring those people together and kind of compete on those kind of games. So I think we we would see a lot, a lot of innovation coming down uh, in gaming industry. And it, it looks one of the most promising industry in, in it, after this pandemic, even during this pandemic. And I believe that there... Like country like Nepal could 
generally benefit by creating more gamers and creating more coders who could write better games so that there is more innovation happening in this industry and and i also feel like online freelance work freelance people people who are involved in social media people who are involved in photography people who are involved in different industry where they could work as a freelancer and provide the service to many companies and many industry by just staying at home would be a next boom that would come around this area so i think we we have to kind of imagine the scenario that there should be a platform which provide that facilities for freelance people there should be uh, you know there should be a proper place where all this freelance worker can find a way to kind of connect with those people who are looking for them so i feel like if we solve few puzzles we could be able to create a lot of employment just by staying at home for a lot of nepalese people and i think with with nepalese people we are a lot dedicated to what we do so you know a graphic designer could we could have a lot of number of graphic designers who could provide a lot of services in india in a usa to the world by just staying at home and i think we just need to build those platforms build those possibilities give hope to the youth that there is a huge opportunity out there and i'm telling you it's there just go and keep looking and i'm pretty sure you will find one if you really really want that bad and i, I and i also feel like you know the other industry that i think would boom would be the health and hospital industry so health industry including you know the food that increases your immune system you know anything including sanitizer including mask all this are obvious things but you could imagine that how much care we would take of our health after this because we would want a way to check our immune system all the time because from now we know that our health our body is so much important to us and we need to keep it healthy so you know the veganism movement will expand people who are eating a lot of meat and people who are, who are you know very much against very much against animal killing would have a bigger voice to speak out loud especially for wild animals like and i think we need to create a global law around it saying that let's not eat wild animals because that's where we are getting most of our viruses from so i think i think we would move to a better world where we would not we will leave that space to those animals and we would be in our own area so i think we might have a better world coming forward where we would not be killing wild animals where we will not be eating wild animals and I, that sounds a much better world to me so we have a big change that is coming and 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 we rather than being sad i think there is a huge benefit and huge happiness that we should feel and and i i feel there is a huge opportunity for industries like you know there's a burger call impossible burger which kind of brew meat where they are making everything that a meat has but it is not made by a real animal so it is it is it is a very new innovation and i think that would just boom creating meat like experiences through vegetarian food would be a new paradigm in food industry that we could see and that i think is a next boom as well so in in terms of health i think we would we would drastically change our personal approach to how we see the health we will drastically change how a country needs to handle a pandemic a country needs to build infrastructures and capabilities of human resources skills to address this kind of problems and in 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 our in in the world we need who to kind of be more powerful kind of be away from the politics that goes around you know who that we are seeing right now in the middle of pandemic and i think we need to kind of build a better way to 
run this kind of organization where you know all the small countries could be helped all the poor countries could be helped better and address the problem better than we could that than we are doing right now also i think over than that we would have a huge transformation in education industry i think education is going to just transform into way 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 better i have been advocating of how we have taught our children because i genuinely believe that education was supposed to be given so that you could be knowledgeable and i think what education has given is education has given us to become more kind of a a you know a pass like if you are an educated person you pass to work on this job you, if you are have this degree it's like it's more certificate based than the knowledge based you understand you do not have to go to the college you do not have to go to the mba school to become what you really want to be because i i genuinely believe that the education system that we have been taught was pretty mediocre like even the one that i went through was pretty mediocre and i think we could teach the coming generation in way much better w- we much better using lot of technology using lot of real life examples and giving a very clear perspective of how the world has been and how the world is behaving now and what the world could look like if we do not take these steps so i think we need more environmentalist from education we need more artists we need more creative people coming out of our education system than ever because i believe education can really make a difference in a child in a family in a country in a world but also i believe a right education education that has values education that has meaning education that has compassion for other people education that gives you to become a better human being not in your own society but in your whole world i think that is the education that our generation coming generation should seek because we are at least the the new generation who are like 13 14 15 16 they are the most connected and most le intertwined generation than ever so we have to kind of imagine a education system so all the people who are part of the education system i genuinely want you to kind of you know reimagine on how we can make our education way way much better and way way much valuable than it is right now so moving forward there are like you know i would i would go very quickly so there are good things that might come out of this there are bad things that might come i talked about lot of industry that would get affected and lot of industries that would be very much beneficial out of it and most of it in the between i think they will survive they will move ahead they will like just you know go here and there but they would get away we will all get away we would and moving forward i want to talk about you know how how the world would look like in our coming generation and how you know in a good way and how, in a bad way depending on how our leaders act how how we as a collective you know human being make certain choices that would make a big difference certainly i feel because of this virus as we have a country lockdown there will be less travel the tourism industry would be one of the most impact industry and lot of countries would be more divided because they would not have any people coming in and coming out that is a bad scenario that we might have to live for a while but there is a very good aspect to it as well i think 
as less people go out and only people who have a very important work and very emergency work to do would go out, we would create less carbon footprint, meaning that there will be less environmental impact this year than ever. So we are kind kind of healing the environment, which is in a very weird way a good thing. That we sitting at home, we are kind of helping the environment to heal itself. That sounds pretty amazing to me. I think, like, I, I talked to you about the tourism industry, right? Like, how tourism industry would be severely affected, and especially a country like Nepal. We might be, you know, our hotels would not run. People working in the hospitality industry will be getting affected. And I know it is a very hard time for us to go through. And I think government need to take a certain step to kind of make them keep going for a while. Because I think if we are able to kind of, you know, make our tourism industry survive and we stay as a Nepal, like, because we have a very less crisis, like, we do not have a lot of cases, and also we have zero death till now. That is pretty amazing as a country, and I'm really, really proud of it. I think... Nepal could be a destination once this is over. I think people are most less likely to travel to Italy than they are to Nepal or Kathmandu. Because I genuinely believe, believe they would take that thing into account before they book their trip. So I think if Nepal kind of manages to stay, you know, have a very, very less impact of this virus and is able to control it in a very smart way, I think our tourism industry would boom once, you know, this whole COVID-19 thing is over, which would take a year or two. I think we would have a huge amount of people influxing into it. There would be a lot of people believing maybe because of the natural environment. And there is so many aspects that we have not done research on. And if you, if you have not studied the history, you would understand that the practice of quarantine has has been there with us since centuries in you know in Navar communities when people from Tibet and all these pe- uh, travelers from over there to traders from there would come and they had to sit in Asan and sit 14 days in quarantine and we practiced that the hundreds of years before and we I believe that we have a way more scientific way of seeing things than a lot of Americans and a lot of Europeans because I think those scientific culture and aspect are kind of entwined in our culture and, and the way we kind of you know do things in our daily life. So I believe that we have so much of heritage and history and you know resilience to kind of brand our country into one of the most hottest destination to visit after covid-19 and i genuinely believe we can do it but we need to kind of you know stay in the mark of staying away and from this virus kind because it will, it, 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 you have to understand that if we make political and governance mistakes over these years, we might not be able to achieve and we might be like in a big crisis where we have enough cases and we have to go into lockdown again. And it, it, it generally doesn't make sense. So sanitization, public health awareness, you know, building new companies who are making masks, sanitize, sanitizers, you know, different communities and NGOs making their own rules and regulation on how they're going to follow different industry coming together and telling that what are the things that they could do together so that they could make people aware about this how we move forward in our daily life once everything is open. So bringing that all together would be a very much important. And if we don't and we fail in it, we might be into crisis, you know. And and I think there's a very there's a very sad aspect to this as well because you remember country country like ours depend on a lot of 
money that comes from laborers and workers that have gone outside and sending their remittance to run this country. So we might not be able to depend a lot in that. You know, a lot of people are dependent on that. And countries like us in Asia, countries like, you know, Z Z Mozambique, like, you know, countries that are in Ghana, Tanzania, all these countries would be definitely affected by the future because, like, the world, if things don't go right, because there would be... The developed countries would have crisis on their own, so they might not be able to help countries like ours, which means that we are at the end on our own, right? We have, we have a very clear, distinct scenario, which makes us into understanding that we cannot rely on foreign aid for our whole life, for our whole generation. We need to make fundamental changes where we, as a country, evolve to become something more valuable than being dependent on all these big countries and trying to solve the problems that they don't even understand. So I think as a youth who are educated can come together and find a better solution for different problems that we are facing and come up with unique solutions. So th there, is, there is a very unique position that this virus has put us because the old structure you know old way of thinking old way of doing things old way of running politics old way of running businesses all that are now which were slowly changing and now it is going to change drastically because people are going to make a drastic measures in their businesses people are going to make a drastic measures in their political behavior and you know inclination and faith and what how they have to move forward and as a citizen we need to be kind of aware and say that okay we should use this moment to bring fundamental changes that we could bring in this um, you know in this in this coming days that we're gonna have, we have to live. So I think the, there would be a huge. I think one of the good things that will happen is that a lot of people would start believing in science. So that is something that I am really excited about because I think science has kind of you know, brought us into the understanding of a virus. 100 years ago, we would not even understand. And now we have understood, we are making a vaccine, we would be there in a year. And that is pretty much amazing as a human, you know, achievement. And I'm really, really proud as a human that we are able to kind of, you know, maybe solve and create a universal vaccine over the period of time. And I think this pandemic has just pushed that industry into a huge uh, market where I think a lot of investment will be happening, a lot of interest would be taken on how we can create a universal vaccine that would take away all the viruses that might affect us in the near future. So I think there is a huge, huge potential out there and there's a lot of good news. But I also feel, you know, there would be if, because I, the way I see the, I see the signs, there would be a lot of extreme religious beliefs that might kind of unfold and, you know, kind of make few group of people affected by it. So I think because you can see like all around the world, people who are not complying with the rules and regulations are the people who do not believe in science are the people who are extremely religious, are the people who have certain level of ignorance that they carry in their mind, and people who are very judgy, I would say, people who like to judge others regardless of their own problems. Like, you know, and also people with a huge insecurities with, within them that they look, they look for... An answer in others. They look for praise in others. This this creates a huge, you know, discussion. And I'm really, really kind of excited on how the discussion would go because now people are calling out the bullshit. 
you know before everything was normal you could have your own opinion you could have not have your own opinion but now people are calling out the bullshit if you do not believe in science you don't you're not living in 21st century you are from 18th century who does not understand the importance of us as human being evolving together to become a better world and i think believing in science and you know taking science as a way to find your god might be an answer to all this extreme religious people maybe they want to change some certain perspective i am not against faith i am not against religion i think everybody have a choice and freedom to follow whatever they want but i think science is something that is kind of a basic need right now and i think we should include that in a basic need so that everybody understands that how much important it has become that moving forward our generation should be scientifically knowledged should be scientifically aware regardless of their race caste beliefs and where they belong from <sighs> so out of all that right i also i also think there is like a new world order that might come the power might shift which you already see between america india and china you see how chinese people are able to handle that scenario how well they have managed regardless of all the problems that we could point out to them and look at america all that we praise about america and how they are handling the situation it is kind of you know telling us that we might need a new world order in in into setting an example of how the world needs to move forward how the world needs to get away with the idea of war so anyway i just i forgot to mention in that game thing is that i think i'm going to do a podcast between how we can replace the war through games and maybe you know it it could be a very interesting i have a very good proposition which i will talk about it in coming podcast but just telling you that i think we need a new world order where we are giving importance to certain things that are more important than anything else like our environment like our public health you know certain things that we need to survive so we might see that change but in a in other scenario in other perspective flipping the coin nothing might change like you know we have gone through wars we have gone through pandemics what has happened human behavior inherently remain the same people who are not in power talks about good things once they get into the power they turn they change it's like the the power changing them so i feel like there is a possible scenario that nothing might change and nothing might move forward but i don't want to believe that i think we are changing regardless of how we are evolving regardless of how my mother's father were not same 10 years ago than they are right now i was not the same everybody as an individual has changed meaning that we have kind of changed into a better world all we need to do is we need to kind of you know collect all this information segregate it rightly put it into a right perspective and try to see what can really really be beneficial because at the end what are we looking for we're looking for happiness and i genuinely believe that's what most of the people at the end of core believe that's what they look on anything that they do they want to be happy they want to feel good about what they do so i think what we do and how we do it and when we do it should kind of be very powerful so that when we do we do feel happy about it so i think evolution is more faster than we imagine you know we might fail we might face a big change in how we behave how we communicate there could be a lot of m- mental health issues that might come due to this corona virus so not stigmatizing it not saying that okay i went through the same experience than you why are you behaving differently 
we have to kind of be more compassionate and understand that not everybody feels the same way not everybody thinks the same way not everybody is going through the same life that you're going through everybody has seen the world in a different way and we have to be more open more compassionate to look into their inner soul and try to understand them and maybe try to give at least good and not criticism or not blame or not hatred so that we could make you know day by day a a, a better world and my you know closing statement because i think i have been talking about it a lot cuz i genuinely feel i'm really passionate about it i genuinely feel that we need to kind of fundamentally think you know in a very basic level on things that we could change so that when we go out there and do things our individual changes kind of reflect on our act and that would bring a real change i and i i promise myself like what gandhi has said you know be the change you want to see in the world and i am going to be that change for myself because i want to see that change in the world and anybody who's listening to this till this point ha- does understand that they also need to bring that change within themselves so that they can bring some change outside in the world because there's there's so many people with fears there's so many people with so many problems you know i i have figured out there are like fundamental problems that we are facing right now as a human genre like you know human society is that there's a there's poverty there's economical differences there's health problem there's you know pandemic crisis and handling problem there's an educational problem there's a problem of religious faith and beliefs and how you know few organizations few people manipulate a mass and how they kind of bring them to a breaking point there's a problem with happiness i think people are less happy people are less you know people are more worried than they are happy i think there's a lack of very much lack of happiness that is going around and there is a problem of belief they don't understand what they believe they don't understand what they stand for so i know we might lack or we might seek on the beliefs that we do stand for so i would like to kind of reflect because i know we live in a different world with a different few points with different saying and you might have your opinion i might have my opinion i whatever it is but these are the fundamental problems that we need to address and we are only able to address when we understand what our where our belief lies so i would like to give you a challenge i would like to go after this i would like you to go and i would like you to ask yourself these few questions and these are very few why how what from where you go take a piece of paper you write down why do i believe what i believe what do i believe if you don't understand what do you believe how do you believe it like what is the way of thinking how do you believe in your act like try to write it down try to see and from where this belief is coming from what is the source is it your mother is it your father it is a mentor it is your you know somebody that you believe in how are you structuring these thoughts in your mind that will kind of make it very clear where your beliefs lies you know and when you understand where your belief lies you are able to kind of comprehend the world in a better way because you know what you believe so you know if that thing that the other person is saying aligned with your own belief or not and then you could question them so that they could counter question you and then you maybe you can make adjustment in your own beliefs is okay guys we are human being is okay to make adjustments in your beliefs is okay to evolve your beliefs into a better belief because now you have figured out a better way to do things and isn't that being human is being better giving evolving yourself isn't what that darwin talked about 
understood and made us understand that we as a human generation the we as a nature we are evolving the way nature is that's why the nature evolved and got this virus to us because now it has given a very unique put us into a very unique position because now there are fundamental evolution that needs to happen in our humanity at least in my generation so that the next generation does not have to face the same problem that we are facing right now so saying this much i think we are coming to our conclusion and and i really really thank you for listening to this i really hope that you go and do this you know small brain exercise of finding your beliefs why you believe it how you believe it what you believe and from where that belief is coming from because that might help you to give a very inner perspective on how things should move forward in your life and you making a individual change might bring a drastic change around the world and you never know you might be the next martin luther king you might be the next steve jobs you might be the next kurt cobain you might be the next greatest person that was here to live in this world and i genuinely believe not everybody is destined to the greatness but whoever are they know they had a certain mindset and i believe i need to propagate that mindset more to the world so that we have more of that than less of it and making a difference is way more satisfying than not doing anything at all saying this much i would like to thank you to all of you listening to this podcast i am really really grateful i hope you enjoying this me talking I would come up with more interesting topics. I have few topics that I'm going to talk about, you know. So I'm going to talk about a lot of things that the government in like, you know, in a very so this was a very journal idea of it. So in the future I would be talking about how we could make steps. The government took can take any steps. Individual could take certain steps. you know to to get out of this problem that we are all facing and also what are the different industries at least in nepal we could work and see so one of the potential i feel is marijuana industry which i think can transform us as a country and we could you know we could be in a very different reality than we were and all that would come be coming up in our next podcast stay tuned keep listening keep learning keep seeking keep dreaming thank you so much <laughs>